Hi, I'm Joe Hendricks, and I'm a professional photographer. Uh, I've shot weddings for 13 years, and now elopements for three years. I found my niche in elopement photography here in Telluride, Colorado. And today I want to talk to you about finding your niche in whatever it is that you love about photography. Now, I am making this up 100%. I haven't rehearsed anything. I just, uh, I'm in my studio. I feel like making a video, and I hope it inspires you guys. So, the most important thing that you can do is, one, just find what you love to take pictures of. Now, that could be kind of hard because as a creative person, you love a lot of different things. You love, you know, taking pictures of families that you like in a setting uh, that you can make laugh. And when everything goes well um, with a photo shoot, you just feel like you want to do it all the time. But then you meet a family that you don't like to take pictures of and uh, you realize real quick you don't like family photography. Same thing with weddings, elopements, uh, portraiture, headshots, uh, landscapes. You could be, you could have a beautiful sunset one day. Absolutely fall in love with landscape photography. Take a gorgeous picture that lots of people want to buy and then you get it in your head that you want to do this for the rest of your life. But then you realize you don't like getting up for days that don't have a good picture. So um, you realize really quick whether or not you love certain photography, but it's good to go out and try everything. Um, I've pretty much tried everything. Um, weddings were the things that hit with me the most uh, because I love people. I can handle the stressful situation. I know my camera gear inside and out. I know what I'm doing, and, uh, and I was successful at that for a while, but I found my niche in elopement photography, and my company is elopetelluride.com. You can check it out. Make sure you like my pictures before you go take into any of my advice. You can also check out joehendricks.com. That's just my personal photography website that has a whole bunch of stuff, and you're going to see landscapes, families, elopements, kind of everything on joehendricks.com. Um, but we're talking about niching today. Uh, it's kind of a funny word, niche. But um, the wonderful thing about finding your niche is that if you do something that you love and no one else is doing it, and it's a super specific thing, you could be very successful at it. Very successful. That's what I did with elopements here in Telluride. No one was doing just elopements. I don't want to shoot big weddings anymore. I'm 47 years old. I don't want to be shooting weddings uh, forever. And elopements was something that drew me in because I love landscape photography. But I also love meeting people. I love that one-on-one -on -one interaction with these couples that are having the best day of their life. And the fact that I can give that to them, <laughs> that just makes it so much better. So you can see... I come alive when I talk about elopements. It's just something I love. Um, but what is it that you come alive doing? Now, take photography out of the equation. Think for a second. What is it that you love doing? Do you love playing Pokemon? I, I say that because I have a 10-year-old kid uh, who plays Pokemon. Do you love uh, playing video games? Do you love uh, architecture? Do you like looking at Zillow every single day to see what houses are available in your market? Um, you can easily take a passion like that, looking at Zillow all the time, and turn it into real estate photography, and then your pictures are the ones that are on Zillow all the time. Not only that, but you also find the houses that are available before everybody else does. So if you're looking for a house, uh, kinda, uh, it's kind of a cool thing to do. Um, but it's super, super important to find something that you love that does not involve photography in the first place. Because if you find that, and then you bring the photography into it, well, how much better is your world gonna be? It's gonna be a whole lot better. You're gonna actually enjoy what you're doing. Um, and, and there's a number of things, but I'm gonna go through a quick example of something I've used before for landscape photography. So landscape photography, is what I consider to be one of the hardest fields to make it in when it comes to photography. There's so much competition. 
There are so many people who can get lucky and get an amazing picture because they're in the right place at the right time and it had all the right settings, everything worked out. Um, you can quickly get known for a couple pictures, but to do it consistently over and over and over is hard. Not only that, but you need a story. So every single time I've sold landscape photography in the past, it's because of the story that went along with the picture. It wasn't because the picture was great, which it may have been. It was more that they could relate to the story. Um, just one quick example. I sold a picture of a tree in the snow to a lady out in South Texas where it's super hot. And I wrote her and I said, why did you buy this picture of a cypress tree in the snow up here in Colorado when you live in Texas? And she told me it's because of the story that I wrote with it. I struggled to go to that tree, take that picture and come back. In fact, if I was more negligent, I may have died that day. Um, but I was fine and it was on Christmas Eve. But anyways, I suffered through the long walk in the snow, five miles there with a Snickers bar and a water. And I got back and it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I literally thought that there was a chance that I might die that day. And I wrote for that picture that you just need to be persistent. You need to continue. No matter how hard life gets, keep going forward. And she related to that because she had a daughter who has a daughter who um, has had brain cancer uh, for a long time and she suffered through so much, but she keeps going and she works hard. So that's how you sell a picture in the snow of a tree to a lady in Texas. They can just relate to the story and that's how you sell landscape photography. But when you talk about niches, okay? We, we just talked about the story part. But when you talk about a niche, you have to do something that no one else is doing. And you may think that's kind of hard, but it's gonna be a lot easier than you think. And I'm gonna give you some examples. Um, I don't see this stuff being done anywhere. Maybe you could be the one that takes this on. I don't know. Um, I'm not gonna be doing them, but I can give you the example. So I saw this guy uh, not too long ago last year who would say groundhogs get in his picture all the time. Uh, some kind of groundhog, marmot or whatever. And um, he was complaining about it. And I thought, oh my gosh, why don't you get groundhogs in every single picture? In fact, you could be known as the guy who has landscape photography and there's a groundhog somewhere in that picture. It could almost be like a Where's Waldo. And that's what you become known for. That is super niche. So every time you go to buy Steve's work, you know there's a groundhog in it. And when you show it on your wall, you can say, there's a groundhog somewhere in this picture, go find it. This is what this guy does. He takes pictures of landscapes and there's a groundhog in there somewhere. It's really cool, see if you can find it. And that's the kind of thing that you could do and you could be known for that. And you know, further on down the road, when you get tired of groundhogs, put something else in there, put a rabbit in there or I don't know, a gazelle, <laughs> whatever you want. But those are the kind of things that you can niche on in photography and do very well as a business. You got to have that thing that makes you different. Um, and I, I just think that was like a really creative way of being niche in a overblown market, oversaturated market of landscape photography. So you can go to Horseshoe Bend, where everybody takes pictures of. I have a horseshoe bin picture right over here. Um, and I like mine. Uh, I don't know if it's better or worse than any others, but there's nothing different about it. It's just horseshoe bin. How am I gonna sell this to somebody else? But if a groundhog popped up that day, <laughs> and there's a groundhog in it, you'd be like, oh, that's the guy who takes the groundhog pictures. Um, just something super simple like that. You could also be the person who takes pictures of rocks, okay? You love rocks, or you love seashells, or you love trees, and every single landscape that you take has a tree in it. 
um, or has a rock or has whatever you are niching in. And you could be known as that person. So you don't buy a website that says joehendrickslandscapephotography.com. You buy a website that says, you know, trees in the landscape, you know, or I shoot trees or, you know, you could be super creative with it. But the chances of a domain name like that being available are a whole lot better uh, of a chance than just buying your name with landscape photography because everybody and their mother does that and it's kind of boring. So try to find something a little different. You know, when I talk about family photography or portrait photography or something else like that, um, you, know, you know, there's obviously people who do black and white photography who do super saturated photography. You can have your effects and everything else, um, but then anybody can copy those kind of things. So you don't wanna be the person who does just black and white weddings or black and white um, portraiture. And you might be that person who does that, and that's cool, go for it. But you need, I personally think that if you're gonna niche in something, it needs to be something creative. It needs to be, you know, I take, portraitures of people with freckles. No matter what skin color they are, they have freckles. And every single person has freckles. And that's my thing, because I'm fascinated with freckles, maybe. You know, freckles are beautiful. You know, when some people think that they're different than other people, you see it as beautiful. And when you can find that thing in photography that you see as beautiful, but other people don't see it, that way, well, you can definitely uh, niche on that and just show everybody in the world just how beautiful these people are. Just for being a little different, you see the beauty in them. And that's what you need to look for when you niche in photography. Um, you know, it, it could really be anything. And, and I'm as I'm talking to you, I'm trying to think of something like food photography, like what kind of uh, food photography would make it different. Well, when you think of food photography, you think of uh, a studio setting. You have a big studio with a grill, uh, everything you need to cook. You can put the glue in there to keep stuff together for a hamburger or whatever. Um, you can get really creative with that kind of stuff, but that's what a lot of people do. So to make it different, maybe every single piece of food you have somebody eating it. You know, how many pictures, like you don't see pictures of people eating food as much because no one wants their photograph taken when they're eating food. So maybe you do the awkward food eating. Like you show all these amazing restaurants and everybody's eating food awkwardly. And they have mustard and ketchup dripping down <laughs> their face from eating stuff. Um, you know, or, or they eat stuff that squirts out, squirts all over the camera or whatever. I mean, there's a million different things you can do. All you have to do is think of it differently. Now, you saw me just come up with a few niches just talking to you guys right here um, and trying to explain it to you. If I can do that, just talking to you, you can do that with the things that you love, that you know way more about than I do, and you can go out there and get it. You know, what is it about horses that you love? Do you love horses running all the time? Photograph them running. Photograph them with a slow shutter speed, showing the motion. Maybe the shutter speed is so slow that every single picture of your horse or animal or whatever you take pictures of is extreme motion blur to the point where maybe only the head is in focus or one part of the body is in focus. There's a million different things you can do. So be super creative and go out there and find those things. I'm going to stop there. Like I said, I didn't plan any of this out. I made it all up. <laughs> uh, but if you enjoy this video, uh, subscribe or just comment on it and let me know. Um, the main reason I'm doing this video right now is because in the past, I've had people tell me on YouTube that they like the way that I explain something. So I thought, well, maybe I should explain some more stuff. <laughs> so that is why I'm here. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it inspired you. Um, so go out there and find that thing that you love doing, and turn it into a niche. Get the name, brand it good, and go after it. I can tell you from personal experience, it took me a year and a half to get elopements off and running. 
and I had to do other things until it got off and running. But now, I've never been more successful at a wedding photography type of thing in my life. And I only shoot elopements. And I only shoot elopements in Telluride in this area right here. I don't travel anywhere else. Um, so I say that because you need to understand that you can't start niching today and hope to be successful in a week or a month. It may take you a year. It may take you a couple years. You need to be patient, and, you, and that's why you have to niche in something that you love doing. Because if you love doing it, then you don't care if you get paid or not, although that would be nice. <laughs> but you're going to have more patience niching in something that you love because you don't care. You want to film it. So I hope that helped you out. If you have any questions, email me at joey at joehendricks.com or comment below and let me know what you think. And go out there, start that niche, tag me in a video or on social media um, at Joe Hendricks if you go out and do something and this video helped you out. Take care and I hope you do some good niching. Niching, is that a word? <laughs>